Hello and welcome. I'm about 10 days late to providing this video update on the latest uh, bugs and balance patch for Nebula's Fleet Command, but for the sake of completeness, I'm going to record and upload this anyway. The first change within this patch is that fire control radars can now be detected by ELINT from the pinard. So here I have just a simple test on screen. We have uh, an enemy ship. It has its radar off. However, it does have a lock on this ship here which is right in front. And we can see that with the lock symbol, both on the ship and on the ship card. So when I turn off the radar panel, but leave electronic support on, that ship will now turn into an ELINT track because the fire control radar is pointing at my ship. Now note, this only works when the fire control radar from a ship is on and is targeting one of your ships. If I was to turn the radar back on so that I can select the enemy ship, I'll turn its uh, lock off by right clicking, there we go. So the lock's now off, we can see that the lock is off. Uh, and if I turn my radar off, we can see that with the enemy ship's radar off and their bullseye fire control radar also off, well, it, I can no longer pick up the ELINT signal from that ship. It's important to note that the fire control radar that is being detected by ELINT is affected by two different things. So firstly, the direction of the fire control radar will determine if a pinard will be able to identify it. So on the screen, we can see that the center frigate has a red lock onto the bottom frigate. So its antenna is facing to the bottom of the screen. So from that position, an E-Link Corvette with its pinard facing towards that middle ship will be able to use 100% of its E-Link range to detect that lock. An E-Link Corvette behind that ship, whilst its antenna is facing at the bottom ship, will only be able to see that lock within 15% of its E-Link range and off to the side or being perpendicular to, the, to that lock, you'll be able to use 30% of the ELINT range to pick up that fire control radar. Noting that ELINT ranges are subjective based on the type of Schrader you are using, so your frontline, your parallax, or your spyglass, and any modifying components that you then add onto that. So ultimately what that means is if the fire control radar is pointing in the general direction of the ship with a pinard, you're gonna be able to detect it a lot easier, whereas you're, you'll be less likely to detect a fire control radar that you are behind or to the side of. So the next change was the renaming of component damage resistance to damage threshold. So this is completely different to the hull damage reduction, which is listed on the ship st under ship stats as the component damage reduction. In doing so, this was just a name change. No changes to the damage threshold statistics were made. So damage threshold is component specific. You can see it on the CR10 antennas card that I've put off to the right and, is, and I'm pointing to with the red arrow on screen. It's a minimum amount of damage a component must take in a single hit to go from zero HP to destroyed. So a component isn't automatically destroyed when it reaches zero HP. It needs to take another bit of damage that is above that damage threshold before it is counted as destroyed. And just to show how this is different to the hull damage reduction or the component damage reduction as it's listed uh, in the fleet editor is that this is a hull specific modifier. So your corvettes, your frigates, your light cruisers, battleships, they're all gonna have a different component damage reduction amount. And what's displayed on that first horizontal yellow arrow is the maximum component damage reduction that can be applied. The integrity rating is a progressive bar from the minimum amount to the maximum amount for that hull, which increases with the more components you put onto that ship. So what this does is it reduces the incoming damage to components by the listed percent. So if, if you had filled up this bar and you took X amount of damage, well, that would be reduced by you know 5%. A small change, the defender's ammo usage is now listed onto the unit card. So the rounds per minute have, has been added. It's 2,400 rounds per minute, which is absolutely excellent. So we don't have to do the maths when we're trying to um, put X amount of rounds onto our ship. We know that if every minute of fire, we need at least 2,400 rounds and it's a lot easier to calculate. So uh, that saves us doing the maths when we're trying to build our ships. Moving into the balance component of this update, the community has been discussing for a long time uh, railguns and the 450mm cannons which can be equipped onto the battleships as well as the heavy cruisers. What was happening was railguns up close were able to outperform the 450mm cannon. So the aim was to reduce the railguns from being used as an all-round weapon and more back into a fire support role. So this means that when we have two battleships, a railgun battleship and a cannon battleship, when they get up nice and close, the cannon should win, but at a distance, then the railguns are going to be more effective. 
which now puts the 450 millimeter cannon in a nice position where it is able to engage from sort of that mid to longer range um, at those sort of larger targets a little bit better but still have a bit of hassle hitting those faster moving ships like a corvette so what occurred was um, the cannon was made more durable the hp values for the rail guns being the mark 81 and the mark 82 were swapped with the mark 66 and the mark 68 cannons so both those cannons respectively are now 350 and 450 hp so they will survive a little bit longer when getting in nice and close while making the rail guns a little bit weaker which should be okay as they should be sitting further away from the main engagement area the muzzle velocity on the cannon shells were increased so it went from 700 to 750 meters per second i haven't really tested out how much of an impact this makes but Ultimately, your rounds will now reach the target slightly faster, so this should help hitting the larger targets, sort of that cruiser upwards. And finally, the 450mm had a range uh, increase, so from 9.8 to 11.25, uh, over a kilometre, which is nice, or almost 1.5, um, really positioning itself as a you know that cannon fire support at that mid to long range. This also fills the gap nicely between the 250mm and the rail guns, as that larger calibre round. You've still got the inaccuracies to deal with, uh, at, particularly when you get out to the 11.25 kilometer range, being that the cannon spread and the velocity of the shells are gonna make it a little bit, um, a little bit inaccurate, but you've got ways to either modify that down or use locks uh, or a number of other options to get your rounds on target. A few other buffs that happened uh, to cannons and ammo, the 250 millimeter radio proximity fuses has had its second or third buff this year. The radio proximity fuses were still uh, underused within the game and this may see more people taking the 250 mil. So even though it was able to do damage up to a point, it couldn't overcome the damage threshold for a number of the smaller ships components. So it couldn't actually destroy, it could take down and damage a number of drives and engines on corvettes and frigates but it couldn't overcome the damage threshold and actually take them out so now the radio proximity fuse has been increased um, per raise damage from 13 to 16 damage which will take it over the 15 damage threshold uh, for those smaller components now if you mass a whole bunch of 250 millimeter radio proximity fuse fire onto you know a corvette swarm you're going to expect it to actually start to knock out components i wouldn't be surprised if players started to take you know one point's worth of 250 millimeter rpf uh, just for that sort of scenario the mark 62 had its, had its reload time uh, reduced the mark 62 being the double barreled 120 millimeter cannon uh, previously its cycle time was uh, less efficient than the mark 61 when we you looked at it on a points cost so with a reduction um, of 2.5 seconds in its reload time it should be used a little bit more and most likely we'll, you'll see it on those small hulls being you know those corvettes and frigates which are designed at hunting you know their uh, their counterpart corvettes and frigates on the other team and then all 120 millimeter uh, natures of uh, ammunition have had a range increase from 6.4 to 7.2 kilometers uh, this one i can't remember the reason why it occurred uh, but it should increase the utility for a number of the smaller ships especially for the the smaller swarms um, you know if, if you're taking a corvette swarm or a frigate swarm it would just be able to fire out that little bit further finally we come to the nurse part of the uh, weapons balance so the 300 millimeter rail slugs uh, have had the only nerf uh, within this patch uh, as discussed earlier the the reason for this was to move it from all round use into uh, back into its sort of fire support role so whenever a rail gun whenever a rail slug uh, over penetrates it only does a percentage of its damage and not the full amount so this has been reduced even further from 30 percent down to 15 percent so what this means for you is that firing at the smaller ships, you know, your corvettes, your frigates, your destroyers, uh, certain angles on the light cruisers, you're going to do less damage as it over penetrates and therefore you're going to need more fire in order to uh, start to knock things out. Now that's generally okay if you've got a railgun battleship or even a, a heavy cruiser, it's probably going to be bringing enough shots to bear but you may need a couple more shots in order to really start to do the damage you previously were doing. So just a quick example to show what this means, noting that I'm using the nice round number of 100 and we're not applying the component or the hull damage reduction for ease of uh, this example. So if you were to take 100 damage, if a round overpens, then the, then the ship would take 15 damage. If the round did not overpen, you'd be doing the full amount of damage, which would be 100. 
it'll be interesting to see how this affects the railguns in the game. It still seems that the community has uh, varying opinions on the railguns. So uh, this may be that first step to sort of bring that balance further. However, incremental change is always better than uh, massive wide sweeping changes. Other than that, there were a few bugs that were fixed. I'll put a link down below so that you can uh, have a look at the Steam page and look up those bugs. Nothing that I've personally encountered or anything that sort of jumps out at me as sort of game breaking. Other than that, that brings uh, this weapons balance update to a close. Have a good day and take care.